After the release of Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying, it was just a few weeks before the content became very stale for me and I just ultimately put the game down. Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying had a few redeeming qualities but ultimately couldn't hold my attention as most of the quests were just filler junk compared to the quests and content that came with Forsaken. Season of the Dawn was very intriguing with the Saint-14 theme, but after logging on day one, it became clear to me that again, this season was going to be filled with mindless, meaningless content. I'd been playing for 30 minutes of the new season and all I had done so far was kill Cabal on the Tangled Shore. That's when I again put the game down for the remainder of the season saying, well, I'll come back next season if there's something for me. And a few months later, Bungie announced something that was for me. Trials of Osiris Return. I'll admit, the announcement of Trials of Osiris Return had me pretty excited and I quickly hopped aboard the hype train. I soon learned though that that was a mistake. I'll get into Trials of Osiris in a minute, but first I want to talk about the PvE we got for this season. Like I mentioned earlier, PvE content throughout the Season of the Undying and the Season of Dawn were very shallow and meaningless. Basic horde mode followed by endless grindy quests and bounties. Things have not changed here in Season of the Worthy for PvE. Right off the bat, we get a cutscene showing what the overall story of this season is about, and the general consensus around this cutscene and the plot for this season is that it's pretty boring. And it is, because the Red Legion are the least interesting enemies in the game, and there are so many more plot lines Bungie could have continued that would have been way more interesting. The Pyramids, the Nine, the Drifter, the Dreaming City, Aldrin, Kallus, Savathun, pretty much anything but the Red Legion. But I was able to see past the story this season as long as there were some worthwhile gameplay loops in the PvE and PvP activities. But as I should have expected, quality content was nowhere to be found. The Seraph Towers are once again another horde mode but this time not even match made and are instead just public events. Seraph Towers are mainly just a weaker combination of the Sundial and Escalation Protocol. Also, the loot from the Seraph Towers is much worse than anything else in the game currently, but there is a valid reason as to why they intentionally made this loot worse, and Dado pointed it out in his video discussing Season of the Worthy. Basically, it's likely in preparation for weapon retirement so that in a few seasons time, all the damage boosting weapon perk combos like Outlaw or Rampage will be a thing of the past, allowing for other perk combos to shine, but that doesn't help the fact that the loot is still currently worse and not worth chasing. Recently, Luke Smith talked about how overhauls and changes would be coming to the core activities of Destiny 2, meaning Strikes, Crucible, and Gambit. He discussed making them more rewarding and that there would be more focus on the core activities. This is something that I absolutely agree with, and in a future video, I'll discuss the importance of core activities at length, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Up to this point, the only reason to do any of the core activities were the seasonal ritual weapons. They gave us a reason to run Strikes, play Crucible, and farm Gambit. So it's a bit ironic that so shortly after Luke Smith talked about focusing more on core activities that Bungie didn't include ritual weapons for this season. Now the only reason to do core activities was removed. Vanguard strikes don't have unique drops like they did in D1 so they still only matter for a level 1 power drop. Same goes for Gambit and Crucible. While it is disappointing that we didn't get any ritual weapons, I tried to shrug it off and give Bungie the benefit of the doubt. But then they had to go on and say some of the biggest BS I've ever heard in my life on the Destiny subreddit. In a post by DMG, and this isn't a knock against DMG because he's just relaying the information from people above him in the company, he said this, We are aware of the strong desire from players for pursuit weapons to return for Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit. Speaking with the team, they are candidates for future weapon allocation in a future season. Note, can't make any promises yet. It's a tricky balancing act, as pursuit weapons could come at the cost of general rewards allocated for alternate activities. Legendary weapons for trials as an example. We'll be sure to let you know our future plans when we have more information. So if I'm hearing this right, Bungie claims that they don't have enough manpower or resources to create ritual weapons because they used up all their manpower to copy paste old weapons from Destiny 1? I gotta say there is something seriously wrong at Bungie if this statement is to be believed, which I don't believe it, and I'll tell you why. Bungie claims there isn't enough resources to reskin content and add three weapons to the game, right? Well, they definitely do have the resources, they just allocate them to completely different parts of the game. Parts of the game that everybody loves. Eververse. If we take a look at the cash shop right now for this season, we can see a ton of new emotes and finishers, plenty of armor and weapon ornaments, more emotes, ghost projections, and transmat effects. I count 44 total new Eververse items that without a doubt took resources and manpower to create. So it's clear Bungie has the resources, 
But this is what they really care about. Eververse. It's why we haven't seen an updated world pool since Forsaken. It's why they keep reskinning old content. It's why tower and world vendors haven't had a gear refresh in years. This is why the game is becoming less and less appealing to many players. The game plays like a mobile game, meaningless and endless number of bounties collecting new materials every season, and the only cool items are in a cash shop. You're starting to sound a lot like Raid Shadow Legends over here, Bungie. People have tried to defend Eververse saying, they gotta make money somehow, it's free to play now, they need money. Sure, at face value, I can understand that argument, but then what the hell are they doing with my $30 for an expansion, and the other $30 I paid for the annual pass? There are millions of people who spend at minimum $60 a year to play Destiny. So yes, while it is free to play, expansions and season pass still cost money, and there are millions of people who buy them. Think about this for a second. A game like The Witcher 3 comes out and they charge 60 bucks. A year later they have maybe $30 worth of DLC content. After Witcher 3, CD Projekt Red's next game isn't set to release for 5 years. Meanwhile, they are able to pay their 887 employees without problem for those 5 years, work on massive quality games, and still the company makes a good profit. They made $215 million since 2015 from The Witcher 3, 96 million of which was profit, and that means developing The Witcher 3 cost them $120 million across its 4 years of development, $30 million a year to run their company and develop the game. Now we look at Bungie who has around 600 employees who last year alone made $300 million from digital sales. And we don't know the figures for how much of that was profit, but considering how cheap and lacking Destiny content is, I wouldn't be surprised if over half of that was profit. In fact, a lot more than half. Because I can't imagine a world where Season of the Drifter, Season of Opulence, and Shadowkeep cost Bungie $150 million in one year and The Witcher 3 only cost $120 million in 4 years. Now like I said, if you play Destiny actively, which is millions of players, then not only do you buy the Season Pass, which is $30, but you likely bought Shadowkeep, another $30. So $60 this year already on a free to play game. Now, there is almost 2 million active players on Destiny 2 daily, and plenty more have purchased Shadowkeep and the Season Pass. But let's just say that those 2 million active players all bought Shadowkeep and the Season Pass. Well, Bungie has made $120 million from those players already this year, and that's being generous. There's likely more than 2 million people who bought Shadowkeep and the Season Pass. That doesn't even include Eververse sales, which I'm sure make up a huge amount of revenue for Bungie on top of the expansion and Season Pass sales. So I go back to that question, what the hell am I paying $30 a year for an annual pass when that can't even get me 3 weapons to chase in a given season? Bungie has gone on record saying that this year, since they no longer have Vicarious Vision and High Moon Studios, that the Season Pass content was going to be much more lacking than last year's season content. And I set my expectations accordingly for what that would mean. But then I said to myself, why did this year's annual pass cost the same amount of money as last year's? If Bungie is literally telling us that this year's content is going to be much less than last year's, why would they charge the same exact price as they did for last year's? Well, because they can, because the Destiny player base just eats it up and buys it anyway, and that's why we shouldn't expect anything to change in Destiny. People will buy it no matter what Bungie puts out. And Bungie can keep saying, we are listening to you, we hear you, but it feels like everything that the intelligent part of this community says just falls on deaf ears every single passing season. Things won't change at Bungie as long as they keep making this kind of money, which I'm sure they will. So again, don't expect Bungie to change course anytime soon. Moving past the abomination that is the Eververse store, now it's time to talk about Trials. Trials is extremely sweaty, which I fully expected and I overall don't have a problem with. It was sweaty in D1, and it's sweaty in D2, that's fine. The problem I have with this reintroduction of Trials is something else. Incentive. Somehow, someway, even though this version of Trials is literally copy-pasted from Destiny 1, they managed to make it even worse than it was in Destiny 1. I made a video about what Trials would need to succeed before the release of Season 10 and the biggest thing was Adept Weapons and Incentive. Adept Weapons in D1 were essentially the same exact weapon but with one more perk on it. They were only obtainable through a flawless trip to the lighthouse and their absence here has made going flawless basically pointless. Sure, there's an armor glow and an emblem, but like I've said in the past, people play Destiny for the loot, and more specifically, for weapons. Without flawless weapons, the incentive to even play Trials is all but gone. Not to mention there are an extremely high number of cheaters in Trials right now, and while they are ruining the game mode, Bungie's anti-cheat has done just about nothing to combat them. 
I had every intention of playing Trials week 1 of its release, but after seeing there were no adept weapons, combined with the fact that the PvE content is horrible this season, I didn't bother playing this season until a week after launch and only played Trials this last weekend. Overall, this whole season has been lacking any incentive in all of its content. PvE is pointless. PvP is pointless. And there aren't any reasons to play core activities thanks to the removal of ritual weapons. Season of the Worthy or Season of the Worthless? You guys let me know your thoughts down below on the state of the game. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.